Over a year ago, we were introduced to a revolutionary internal combustion engine from Astron Aerospace called Omega-1. Theoretically, this engine seemed promising, weighing just 16 kilograms and producing 120 horsepower, but its only operation video showed oil leaking from all seals. At the time, the developers explained this was due to it being one of the first prototypes with poor seals. Their goal was to demonstrate that the concept itself was viable. In the Omega-1 engine, there are plans to use rear rotors and a titanium casing, with an aluminum front rotor made with minimal tolerances, allowing the engine to operate completely oil-free in the combustion chambers. This is facilitated by the fact that friction losses are less than 1%, and the predicted service life of such a motor is over 100,000 hours. It is capable of operating on any type of fuel. The total cost of the engine, including the production of high-precision titanium parts, is estimated to be around $3,800. But now, another version of the engine has appeared, which has been in development for more than three years. It's called the H2 Starfire, and it's in its fourth generation. H2 Starfire weighs 54 kilograms, with the power increased to 450 horsepower, and torque exceeding 813 newton meters. The idle speed is set at 1,000 revolutions per minute, and it can rev up to 25,000 RPM. In terms of size, this engine is twice as small as, for example, a small four-cylinder conventional engine, but it is four times as powerful and twice as light. The H2 Starfire engine is 29 centimeters wide, 32 centimeters deep, and 44 centimeters tall. If you were to place two such engines under the hood, instead of a four-cylinder engine, you'd end up with more than 900 horsepower and over 1,600 newton meters of torque. Oil changes will only need to be performed once every 50,000 kilometers of mileage, and its thermal efficiency is over 60%. In the new engine, the number of parts has been reduced from 114 to 82, and now almost all components are made of aluminum to reduce costs. But this engine version is designed for hydrogen use. Shall we see how this works? You can divide this engine into the front and back parts. The rotor part, colored blue, is where the intake of air and its compression occur these are the first and second strokes of a conventional engine the rotor part colored red is where the power stroke and exhaust gas outlet take place looking from the front the top rotor can be likened to a camshaft which is used to open the valve the lower part features two combustion chambers where as previously mentioned intake and compression occur in one and the power stroke and exhaust take place in the other Thanks to this arrangement, all four strokes are executed simultaneously in one revolution of the engine's output shaft. Now we are looking at the engine from the front, we see that on one side of this piston, intake occurs, meaning air is sucked in through this air intake, and on the other side, the air is compressed. When the cycle ends, we can see that air is still being sucked in from this side and fills the cylinder completely. On the other side, the air compression reaches its maximum value, and fuel is added, in this case, hydrogen. Now, the fuel-air mixture moves into the pre-combustion chamber to ignite. On the back side of the engine, in the same cylinder, the power stroke and the exhaust gas exit begin. In these shots, we can see the pre-combustion chamber located between the front and back cylinder. In this chamber, the fuel-air mixture is transferred, and ignition from compression, similar to a diesel engine, occurs. Among the new solutions in the H2 Starfire, the intake has been significantly increased, making it easier for air to fill the cylinder. To use hydrogen, but save on expensive injectors, a valve with a pressure regulator is used. Hydrogen is filled into tanks at pressures up to 700 bars and when used in the engine, it is enough to meter the hydrogen feed. Another solution to improve environmental friendliness and prevent the formation of NOx at high combustion temperatures, is the inclusion of an EGR valve. And portion of the exhaust gases is redirected back into the combustion chamber. This engine looks at least interesting. In the near future, we expect a fully operational version producing 450 horsepower and 800 newton meters of torque. But for now, they are showing how this motor is being manufactured. Subscribe to the channel and watch other videos.